for the glory of God and the honor of the Blessed Virgin of Mount Carmel. We celebrate today in joyful thanksgiving the 75 years of our Carmel, which has borne witness to the uninterrupted blessings and unwavering faithfulness of God. All of us who have come to share life and mission in this Carmel have been touched by love, the love which sustained and enriched the gift of our vocation as Carmelites. Through the years, the accompanying presence and friendship of God have been a powerful and persevering reality and which have been made manifest in the great, ordinary, and even insignificant events in our life as one family. Sacrifices have been offered, trials and joys of community life have been embraced, and abandonment to the mystery of prayer has been a humble endeavor. But in all this, it is always God who gives the growth and who causes fruitfulness all these 75 years. And so today, even in the midst of pandemic, let this simple diamond celebration be a humble welcome to a new face of this, our Carmel's journey. Let us renew our trust and confidence in God's goodness and mercy as we lovingly remember Bishop Alfredo Versosa, our founding mothers and sisters, and all our sisters in this Carmel who have gone ahead of us. Let our hearts be one in celebrating the glory and the immensity of God's merciful love. Let us now begin our Eucharistic celebration. things were what it should be, normal, we always say, people say, we hope things will go back to normal, unless God intervenes, that may not happen. If things were normal, we will be filled with people here. Of course, we have people with us through internet, we are grateful for them sharing our joy. But why are we like this? On the fifth centenary of our Christianity in the islands, 
the 75th year of this monastery where you feel the presence of the Holy Mother very strongly. Why are we like this in 2021? I have only one answer. God and our Blessed Mother would like us to go back to 1946, a year after that great war. And who knows, probably we are also in a great war like, like right now. It was so simple, and yet the grace of God was not lacking. In fact, it is abundant. And that is what we still believe now. God's grace is never lacking. We have the faith, we have the faith of St. Teresa of Avila and all the Carmelite saints today. And there is even more reason to thank God for this very special day in this very special moment of human history. In the midst of great troubles, the world is on fire and prayer and faith more important these days. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our part of the sinfulness of the world and our own sinfulness. And as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us beg pardon from the Lord who is rich in mercy and eternal in his love for us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Jesus.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, while the Blessed Virgin Mary was carrying your Son in her womb, inspired her to visit Elizabeth, grant us, we pray, that faithful to the promptings of the Spirit, she may magnify your greatness with the Virgin Mary. We may magnify your greatness with the Virgin Mary at all times through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb lived for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. In every generation, he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months, and then returned to her home. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers in the Holy Priesthood, Mother Prioress and the sisters, our companions in the beautiful celebration of our Holy Eucharist, thanksgiving to God for the Diamond Jubilee of this place of prayer in the Archdiocese of Lipa. Dear pilgrims, dear benefactors, friends, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us imagine what it was on May 31, 1946. It was not the Feast of the Visitation. Since uh, the, twi the 20s, due to the insistence of Cardinal Mercier of Malin, Brussels, the feast was that of, the, of Mary, Mediatrix of All Grace. It was changed after Vatican II. It would be probably malicious for me to say that uh, there are some elements in the higher levels of ecclesiastical governance who did not like the title Mediatrix of All Grace. 
And so they put the visitation, which is a very wonderful mystery. The second joyful mystery. As the feast on the 31st of May. But that was in the 60s. Without knowing it, the feast of the visitation, which we celebrate now, is a confirmation of Marian mediation. That's why, let us not only go back to 1946. Let's go farther, almost 2,000 or more than 2,000 years ago. While in 1946, the, the country was reeling with great suffering, only a, a year after the Great War, there was much poverty in this very place. So many Filipinos were massacred because of the cruelty of the Second World War. God decided that there will be a place of prayer for this local church. At the time, it was only 36 years old, local church, a place of prayer. Because the only solution to the difficulties in the mid 40s that plagued the whole world, and especially this country and this place, the only hope is faith and God, trust in Him and prayerful hearts. More than 2,000 years ago, the whole world were also in turmoil. The big people of the governments were trying to control people everywhere. We will hear in the third mystery of joy how under the rule of Quirinius, who was the head of the province of Syria, which occupies the Holy Land, what we call now Holy Land, all people were told to enroll in their places of origin. But before that, we know what happened. And today we celebrate the fact that the Blessed Mother is the bearer of Jesus. First to Elizabeth and John, to the house of Zachary, but to all. He is, she is mediatrix of all grace. Because total grace, tuta gratia, is Jesus. As St. Paul would say, in him... We have received all the blessings of heaven. And he is the greatest of all blessings. He is gratia, the grace himself. Previous to what happened, what we heard in the gospel today, the angel addressed Mary a title that is so meaningful. Hail, full of grace which means hail full of God. A human being so full of the divine, full of Jesus. Because Jesus is Emmanuel. We see in the first reading today how God loves Jerusalem and she is the dwelling place of God. And we proclaim among us, among you, is the great and holy one of Israel. That you is the people of God. That you is humanity. That you is Mary. Who becoming later on mother of all humanity. Because she's the mother of God. Symbolizes all of us. Because in her maternal role. As this mother of God. She gives God, she gives grace, she gives God with us, she gives Jesus who is God who saves us to all. She is indeed mediatrix of all grace. Without her yes, that she addressed to her, to the angel, her visitor, she would not have been mediatrix. She would not have been the medium for God to become a human being. 
and it, she would not be on the cross the means also for all human beings to go into the word of God when she received that command that decree woman behold your son this is God's way of coming to us the purest body virgin of the virgin and she is our way to God that's why she symbolizes the church the church that must be totally united to Christ to Christ the church which should be full of grace because the Lord is with her and she's blessed among all women that's why learning and believing in the angel after learning that her cousin is six months with child in her womb the first instinct was to go to that hill country in Judah and entering the house of Zechariah she greeted Elizabeth who became filled with the spirit upon hearing the salutation of the mother of God when I heard when your voice came to my ears, she said, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. And she recognized, who am I that the mother of my Lord shall come to visit me? Who are we that the mother of the Lord should come to visit us starting 75 years ago? And she comes normally at the most difficult moment of the life of humanity, also the life of our country, the life of this province and diocese. She comes at the moment when we need, we need her. And what is beautiful, she did not only come, she asks to remain. And she remains so that we will be better than Elizabeth, who said, who am I that the mother of my Lord will come to me? She remains so that we can say to, we can realize who are we? That we can always see the mother of the Lord here in this place, waiting for us, telling us this is the place of prayer. The Archdiocese of Blipa will be truly church of God, a, a local church. And a place where the body of Christ is really alive because of Carmel, of Mediatrix, of all grace. A place of prayer. Today, not many are physically present, but I know there are people praying with us all over the diocese, the archdiocese, all over the world. And they know that she is here. We celebrate today the 75th anniversary of the foundation of this monastery, this place of prayer. And I'm sure 75 years ago, led probably by Bishop Versosa, there were few people. There were present a small group, not as big as we normally would have would have now, like us, a well, small group. They did not know the future. Only God knows. Only the Blessed Mother knows what this will become. And all these years, it has become what it is, not without pain. Because, as we have heard yesterday, it is suffering with Christ that we will share in His glory. The glory of God is here, offered to all of us, but don't think you will enter into that glory, enjoying life. When the Our Lady of Lourdes appeared to Bernadette, the same words were spoken to someone here, almost 75 years ago too. I do not promise you happiness on earth and it is true she had always accompanied the fruit of her womb 
Blessed is she and the fruit of her womb accompanying him until Calvary. There is no other place that they lead us to, mother and son. It is Calvary, but that is the place of God's triumph. And Calvary has always been part of the history of this community. And it will always be. Because that those words were not spoken to a privileged individual. It is spoken to those who will be faithful and believe and accept the word of God, Jesus, in their midst. Who will believe that God is with us and he saves us. He will never allow anyone faithful to him to be lost. And we are privileged to have this prayer place so close to us. Because the mother of our Lord does not only visit us, she remains with us. She receives us, she welcomes, welcomes us, and would like to continue to give us her son. How privileged we are. But all privileged by God are those who will accept the challenge of the cross. If we avoid that cross, we can be sure we are not with him. But when we embrace the cross, as St. Teresa and all the saints did, and the cross accepted in all humility and all hiddenness and all patience and simplicity, we are on the right track. God is with us. The mother of God takes care of us. They will never abandon us. When this monastery was uh, founded 75 years ago, I was not even one and a half years old. But since I was a child, I, we were praying the rosary before the image. I did not know at that time of the mediatrix of all grace. And I always think that the reason why I became unworthily the shepherd of this place for 13 years, 13 is wonderful name, especially wonderful number, especially our Fatima. It is for her. And all those years, you know, I am from this place, from Batangas, but I was not a priest of Batangas. And I, was, I felt always bad that I was not a priest of Batangas. Of the but I realized God has his plans. If his plan for me is to be only the Archbishop in order to proclaim the Blessed Virgin Mary, I am happy. I have done what I have come here for. It is all the plan of God. And it's a great joy that I am the one celebrating now on your 75th anniversary. It is all God's plan. Let us open ourselves to the plan of God. Even this COVID-19 pandemic, although created by the evil one and his minions, God will transform this into a source of blessing for all of us. If only we will trust in him and only in him and in the power of our blessed mother, mediatrix of all grace. If we refuse her, we refuse God, then we will be really victim. And we are willing victim, allowing ourselves to be marked by the evil one. But we are marked with the cross of Christ. The cross that was very real when this monastery was born in this beautiful place. It is for a sacred reason. We must never doubt that. And that reason has to be fulfilled. A place of prayer for the rest of the local church of Lipa and beyond that. And it is a pray, place of presence of God. Because the mother of the Lord is not only here to visit us, but to remain with us. And to send us everywhere to proclaim the greatness of the Lord. Because the greatness of the Lord we know very well that made him, made her 
object of praise in all generations. We know very well and we pray that again and again, sometimes without knowing it. The Almighty has done great things for her. He will do great things for us. Provided we always declare holy is his name. He is the ruler of our life. Not the powerful of this world that will bring you to trouble. Even eternal damnation. Because he has mercy. God alone is merciful. He has mercy on those who fear him. How many of us, including priests, bishops, religious, fear COVID-19, but do not fear God? Those who fear him will obtain mercy. He will cast down the mighty from their thrones and lift up the lowly. He will fill the hungry with good things and the rich he will send empty away. This place is a reminder that God alone is our salvation. It's not the vaccine. It's not the human means. It's not the human leaders who only make money out of your misery. God is our salvation. In the Old Testament, when the people of God forget that, they, get, they are lost. When they remember that, they are saved. We are that people now. If you believe that there is salvation elsewhere than God, if you believe that there is someone or some people or something that is better than the mother of God, then you are in for a great disappointment. Only God is our salvation. He uses people who are God-fearing, never people who are God-hating. The God-haters are with the evil one. They will lose. And you will lose with them if you believe in the power of the wealthy and the powerful in this world. It is the prince of darkness who says that. But in the, those who believe in the power of God, exercise in simplicity, in poverty, in humility, then you are on the right side. You will triumph with the queen of heaven and earth. That is the message of this place. And it is a message that is spoken in silence and on the, on the knees. It is a message that must be proclaimed, especially in these difficult times. The same difficulty that the Son of Man, the Son of God experienced when he entered into the world of men. The same difficulty experienced by the founders of this monastery. It is even the same difficulty, maybe even worse, that we experience now. But there is nothing to fear. There is everything to trust in God. And only in God can we find real salvation. No, nowhere else. And that is why we are gathered here now. And I thank God because we have reached the 75th year of this place of prayer. And I know that it is, this is meant to go on. Because it is not only we who are here answering the call of God and of the mother of God, but God himself is with us. And the mother of God is awaiting us always to send us to the world and tell them the only hope for our future is God with us, Emmanuel, God who saves, Jesus. Dear Carmelite sisters, today on the 75th anniversary of the foundation of this Carmel, it is fitting that joyful thanksgiving be offered to Almighty God, for from Him came the inspiration 
and everything that had made possible the foundation and the life-giving presence of this Carmel in the Archdiocese of Lipa. I invite you, therefore, as a sign of gratitude to renew the fervor and the devotedness to prayer and sacrifice that had drawn you to this home of Our Lady, Mediatrix of All Grace. Almighty, ever-living God, we stand before you today with complete surrender to your grace and mercy. You have blessed the beginnings of this partner with its saintly bishop and self-effacing, dedicated founding mothers and sisters. For them, glory to you. Over the years, your love and providence never failed. Blessed be your holy name. Our Carmel has stood firm, sustained by your friendship and your gift of vocations. Praise and honor to you forever. Today, we will dedicate ourselves to the service of the Archdiocese of Lipa, for the strengthening of faith of our people, and for the benefit of souls we touch by prayer and sacrifice. All for the glory of God and the honor of the Blessed Virgin of Mount Carmel. May the Lord be continually your joy and your crown. May he graciously bless you with the power of his love always and forever.
My dear Carmelite sisters, your joy comes from knowing that your self-offering gives life to the Church. Draw inspiration from this anniversary in order to give more of yourself for the Lord. For the Lord gives increase to your offering even beyond your expectations for the holiness of the Church. And dear people of God, through God's goodness, you have come to share the grace of this jubilee. May your participation in this celebration be an enrichment of your faith, hope, and love, and bring you the joy that cannot be taken away from you. May the Lord be praised now and forever. Jesus, our High Priest, offered prayers for the sanctification of those He loves. In union with Him, we lift up our hearts to our Heavenly Father. Let our prayer rise up to you like incense. With Jesus, we pray for Pope Francis and for all our bishops. Sanctify them, protect them with your name, that they may be one. O Heavenly Father, we pray that our prayer rise up to you like incense. With Jesus, we pray for all political leaders. Guard them from the evil one. Consecrate them by means of truth. O Almighty Father, we pray that our prayer rise up to you like incense. With Jesus, we pray for all families and those who have received your word and have believed. Live in them. May their unity be complete, O loving Father. We pray. Let our prayer rise up to you like incense. With Jesus, we pray for Carmelite communities, for all religious and for those who left family and worldly treasures for the sake of the gospel. Keep careful watch over them. May they share your joy completely, O Most Holy Father, we pray. Let our prayer rise up to you like incense. With Jesus, we pray for all our loved ones, those we promise to pray for, and all the people of Lipa. Continue to reveal to them and to all of us your, your name and your mercy. May your love live in them and in us. O merciful Father, we pray. Let our prayer rise up to you like incense. With Jesus, we pray for our beloved dead, particularly Bishop Alfredo Verzosa, Bishop Alfredo Oviar, our foundresses and all our mothers and sisters who have been part of this Carmel's journey. Bring them into the company of your saints. May they see your glory, O Eternal Father, we pray. Let our prayer rise up to you like incense. Most gracious Father, you have walked with us and have endowed us with the gift of your presence. Grant us the grace to continually behold the face of your Son, who is our Savior, for he lives and reigns with you forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the blood, the, the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Praise, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May our offerings of this saving sacrifice be acceptable to your majesty, O Lord, as you were pleased to accept the charity of the most blessed mother of your only begotten son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is rightly just, it is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness, as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's end, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty 
and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gilbert, our Bishop, Ramon, our former Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Queen Beauty of Carmel, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Teresa of Jesus, John of the Cross, 
the rest of our child Jesus, all the Carmelite saints, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We are married to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace should grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us give to each other the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But only say the word, and my soul shall be
Let us pray. May your church proclaim your greatness, O God, for you have done great things for your faithful. And as Saint John the Baptist leapt with joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of Christ, so may your church rejoice to receive in this sacrament the same ever-living Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear Carmelite sisters, Sustained by the love of God, your Carmel has humbly reached the 75th year of her existence in the Archdiocese of Lipa. And if it is so good to recall how this holy place became become a source of strength and courage to our people. Today, it is with great deep gratitude that we remember in a special way our saintly founder, Bishop Alfredo Bersosa, and all the founding mothers and sisters. There was a love that was tried and purified, but how blessed indeed are they who remain rooted in faith and love of God. The inspiration of these violent lovers of Mary can only be held dear with great reverence, gratitude, for they have done the will of God with great courage and persevering faith. Seventy-five years, not without pain or sorrow or affliction, but combined with the magnificence of grace and mercy, 
This Carmel lives on with her witness to the power of prayer and sacrifice. Our hearts are filled with joy. It is indeed good to be here. And so, with one grateful voice, let us acclaim the Lord. with you. And with your spirit. Dear Carmelite sisters, in the spirit of Our Lady's Thanksgiving, may your life be a continuing hymn of praise to the Lord. May you always rejoice in Mary's loving care and be filled with the joys of the Holy Spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and bring the love of God to others. Thanks be to God. Happy Diamond Anniversary. Thank you.
Thank you.